hello students this is the second part of the video continuation it is the continuation of the lesson glimpses of the past in the first part we have discussed about uh, how the East India Company came to India how they took advantage of the short-sightedness of the Indian rulers and also the people and how they tried to capture the power take it in their hands and how they try to gain maximum benefit by exploiting the Indian people like the Indian businessmen. Then we also read about a very positive minded uh, man from India, Raja Ramohan Roy, how he had a different opinion, how he went to England, very bravely he spoke to the British people reminded them of their duties of a king's duties towards his subjects so we discussed about all these things and i have also asked you some questions so that one also i'll be discussing but before that we'll try to know more about this story uh, you can look at page number 40 that is the period of 1765 to 1835 this was the period of operation how the British the East India Company tried to oppress the people of India tried to harass them tried to torture them um, they passed one regulation okay a law in the Parliament and under that law any Indian could be jailed without any trial in a court usually what happens whenever an allegation whenever someone uh, is blamed or charged for some unlawful activities or some criminal activities they get a chance to prove themselves innocent in the court but according to this law any Indian who uh, any Indian could be jailed without any trial he or she will not given a chance to prove him or her innocent in the court and you see on one side the Indian people were suffering and on the other side the British officers who were posted in India they were drawing very large amount of money as salaries not only that they also invested some money in some private business of their own and they were making a huge income by the year 1829 Britain was exporting British goods and the amount they were earning was 7 crore rupees of British ready-made goods were exported to India from Britain. We have discussed that they were planning to bring so many ready-made goods to India without any taxes and they were earning a huge amount 7 crore rupees during those days. It was a very big amount and the British was prospering whereas the Indian industries they were collapsing they were dying condition of the cotton weavers became very worst and general governor general Bentinck he reported home that the condition the bones of cotton weavers are bleaching the plains of India he was talking about the condition of the cotton weavers then in the next page you will see the dissatisfaction slowly and slowly the Indian people realize that they have been cheated by the foreigners education in India they were very dissatisfied okay education in India was actually done in Persian or Sanskrit and the British a man named Macaulay he suggested for a change and he wanted the Indian people to educate in English English education produced people for various jobs like clerk produced clerks to whom British gave very some jobs some work and on the other side it produced some intelligent people among the Indians once they started learning English and they discussed among themselves we must educate our brothers try to improve their mental conditions and for these things we have to talk about our problems to the British Parliament 
by the year 1856 once again you look at the map of india there you will find that british had conquered almost the entire india at that time but the people were aware of their real intention they understood that the british actually cared very little about the indian people the kings have become puppets in the hands of britishers and many indian people they have lost their traditional jobs their lands they even complained that the british started converting them to their religion and they wanted to do something in this regard so the people they understood that things were going wrong against them the british people's attention i'm sorry intention was not good so the people wanted to fight against that how long can they tolerate so 1855 to 57 were those years when people started protesting attacking the british fighting against them in various places uh, the main different due to different reasons taxes continued to ruin the peasants in bengal the santhals who had lost their lands under new land laws became desperate in 18 55 they rose in rebellion and massacred Europeans and their supporters alike, the Santhals in Bengal, because they lost their lands, they were very angry and they protested against this and finally they killed so many European people and the people who supported these Europeans. Even in the East India Company, even in the army, there was dissatisfaction because the first of all there was no equality the salary which the um, british man got was different from an indian soldier indian soldiers were only given just some ordinary jobs in the army uh, so there was a complaint against that then they were asked to cross the seas go to some other countries and according to the belief of the indian people that was something wrong and they were very angry they wanted they were angry because the british was trying to remove their tradition traditional rules and customs there was a soldier called mangal pandey you, have, you might have heard about his name there is a movie also based on his name so mangal pandey he attacked the officers of his regiment and he was charged and finally he was executed by the law Thousands of other sepoys revolted and they were stripped of their uniforms and they were chained, put in, chained in iron chains. Those soldiers who protested. Um, another problem was there. Those soldiers who served in the British Army, I'm talking about those Indian soldiers, they, there was a terrible thing they had to practice. Before loading the rifle they had to bite the end of the cartridge and that end portion of the cartridge was coated with the fats of pigs and cows and it was very difficult for both the hindus and muslims to do that and this thing angered the indian soldiers in the east india company then people started on the other side people started spreading the message to unite and protest fight against the british they started sending uh, chapatis were sent from village to village and that was to tell the people that their emperor was in need of their service and like that villages and villages started supporting lotus flowers were also circulated among Indian soldiers and the Indian people the common people they always supported the freedom fighters and then we come to 1857 which was the year of the first revolt started at Meerut, a violent outbreak in Meerut. there was a war among the soldiers okay sepoys then the soldiers the indian soldiers they marched to delhi declared bahadur shah the second as their emperor rebellion spread to various places many landlords who had lost their lands because of the wrong British policies, they were also united in that fight and at any cost they wanted to chase out the British people. The fight for freedom.
many such rulers were there like Begum Hazrat Mahal of Lucknow, very angry against the British. And people were motivating like um, Maulvi Ahmadullah of Faizabad, inspiring the people to join the fight against the Angrez. Azimullah Khan told Tantia Top. And in that way, all those small, small rulers, they became united. Rani Lakshmi Bai was also there. Here it's missing. Even the 80-year-old conversing old man received a bullet in his wrist. He also fought against the British. And what he did, he cut his hand and offered it to Ganga. Mother Ganga, this is my last offering to you. So, <clears throat> so many brave people, they fought against the British. But let me tell you one thing, it was not... A uh, united struggle in different parts, people fought in their own ways. So that was not successful, but it gave a signal to the British. You will read more about this in details in your history lesson. So this is about the story. Major leaders who fought, conversing, 80 years old, Begum Hazrat, Azimullah Khan, Malvi Ahmadullah. No? So many people were there. Thus, Soldiers serving the British army, Indian soldiers, they revolted against their officers. And then this thing, this revolt took place. In Delhi, they declared Bahadur Shah as their emperor. That gave one signal to the British that they can't force the Indian people to do something. Forcefully, they can't rule the Indian people. With this, um, I'll conclude this video. Before that, I asked you some questions. I talked about the enlightened person, the knowledge intellectual man who encouraged the Indian people. He was none other than Raja Ramohan Roy. He went to England and told the, those people that we accept you as the king. You should also accept us as your subjects. And he reminded them of their responsibility a king has towards his people. Then uh, condition of India was not good at the time. People were in believing in deep superstitious beliefs and those things. And Indian preachers were preaching practices like untouchability, child marriage. Then they were saying that misery is due to women. We should not cross the seas in this life. Anyone who does that will lose their religion. So these sort of practices were going on at the time. Here also I have some questions for you. What made the Indian people think that the British is trying to cheat them? What was the condition of the cotton weavers? In which language did the East India Company want to teach the people? And what was the advantage the Indian people got by learning English? There are some questions you think of it and you can also send me the answers through comments. Thank you so much for watching this video.